This is our first lecture for IET 670. And this lecture, we will understand the basics of supply chain and also know the complexity and magnitude of designing and managing a supply chain. Now first, let's understand what is a supply chain. Typically, in a supply chain, the raw materials are procured, items are produced through one or more facilities, and shipped to warehouse or distribution center, and this we consider the intermediary movement or shipment, and then from distribution center to retailer or the customers. Now, in a supply chain, the movement is connected through the transportation system and also another integrated part of supply chain is the storage activities. So these are the two uh, core activities but besides it is also integrated through information, planning and other activities. So the important here is to manage supply chain and the results that we expect managing supply chain is the cost effectiveness of uh, the entire system and also improving the service level. So uh, the supply chain management, the term we conclude as a set of activities that will improve the cost effectiveness of entire system and that will ultimately minimize the cost of the product and improve the customer service and in order to achieve that the objective would be to bring the products at right quantities at right location and at right time and if we achieve these objectives then the total system-wide cost will be minimized and also that will satisfy the service level requirements we have several formal definition for supply chain management and some of them are mentioned here in this slide and also you can find them in our text. Now here, this is a typical look for personal computer supply chain system. And we see here that's begin from the research and development and then procuring the products from different supplier, then manufacturing, then assembly and distribution and finally to the sales service and support and if you look into this picture this figure we will see that the supply chain for personal computer is widened throughout the universe pretty much from research and development through the sales service and support now that's another example of supply chain network this is the Cisco system and in this system, the 80% of the orders are configured through the Cisco's website and then orders automatically transmitted to the suppliers. So the supplier is directly integrated to Cisco's system and then it tries to contact the manufacturers and build and ship products directly from manufacturer to the customers. Only those products which are highly complex Cisco production systems is handling for those type of complex products so the Cisco able to manage with few warehouse so few storing and few transportation and this is how they improve their transportation systems and improve their storage system and thereby minimize their supply chain cost this is a multi-level supply chain network and here it includes different activities, suppliers, the material procurements, then manufacturing, inventory, and then delivery. And also, this movement of the products is connected through the transportation system. So obviously, besides the storage, there is transportation cost involved in supply chain process. Now, we want to understand what makes the supply chain management difficult and this is a very important topic one of the most important reason is the interrelationship that is the supply chain strategies has to be integrated among all the agents all the companies of the chain and second the products are continuously improving and new products are replaced 
So therefore, when a new products are introduced in the market, it means there are new suppliers and new system, new service, and to manage the new products integrated to original supply chain and merging their goals and objective with the main stream goals and objective, it's a difficult task. And second, the minimizing system-wide cost. Minimizing cost of a single facility is difficult, whereas in a supply chain, the cost has to be minimized for entire supply chain. And the third, and that's most uncertainty part in a supply chain, that is the customer demand that never can be forecasted exactly. And the travel time that will never be certain. Always anything can happen. Car or truck will break down and there might be some other problem. Machine will break down. So these are the uncertainty involved in supply chain that we cannot really avoid. But considering these effects or these losses, we have to improve and we have to integrate our supply chain management system. So key observation would be we have to consider every facility that impact cost in the chain. And then we have to look the efficiency and cost effectiveness throughout the system. Also, we have to link the supply chain strategy for the new products. When a new product is introduced into a system, then their supply chain strategy should merge the mainstream supply chain strategy. When a new product is introduced, then a new chain should be developed, and this is we mentioned as a developmental chain and there are certain phases in developmental chains first the product design phase and this is purely the architecture of the products and the second is buy and make decisions or buy or make decisions meaning the product may need several components and we have to decide which components we want to buy at what phase. We might buy some of the components as a ready component from market and some we might want to manufacture from the scratch and some we might want intermediary manufactured item from another. So this is a critical decisions that which components we want to buy and which components we want to make. This is the second phase for any new developmental chain and after that the sourcing decisions and from there on the supply chain begins. Now once we have done with our product designing and our capability and make or buy decisions then we are certain with our suppliers and from there we need to produce the products and the rest of the chain begins the chain putting products storing products in warehouse or distribution center and from there to retailers or the customers here this figure shows uh, the similar concepts that the first is coming the planning and design the planning and design includes product design and then make or buy decisions and then the sourcing need to identify the suppliers based on certain criteria and then comes the supply and procurement then production then distribution and sell as we have mentioned that we have to treat the entire system as one unit now this system is spanned over the globe so if we want to find the best solution for the entire system meaning we have to find the globally optimal system and this is a very challenging problem and there are certain factors that makes this problem challenging and here we try to mention the supply chain is geographically dispersed a complex network the network with different culture different technological levels and different philosophy of workers and managers and people and customers. Second is the conflicting objectives of different facilities. Then third, the dynamic system that there are always some variations over the time. The demand might vary, change over the time 
and then technology and facilities change over the time then matching demand and supply as a difficult situation or difficult aspects and then the different level of inventory and back orders and also the most up-to-date developmental activities and those activities have increased the risk of supply chain management even to a higher level for example that in terms of lean production or offshoring or outsourcing that we often want to outsource the product or outsource some of the part of our products to different suppliers or suppliers to overseas so managing the supply chain is getting difficult through this here this is a supply chain for apparel industry and if we look into here that the raw material network and marketing network starting from raw material network through the marketing network this entire system span over many different facilities and also many different countries winter jacket or coat this is one example of global supply chain China the world's largest producer of cotton making the liner for this winter jacket then Thailand a leading exporter of imitation far that's coming in between the coats inside the coats then the Japan globe's biggest producer of stainless steel so producing the zippers then Germany world's largest or world's fastest snap manufacturer the buttons and others and then the Taiwan specialized in making materials for outdoor clothing so all together a coat is manufactured we here we see that the integration of several countries and several facilities are needed to produce one jacket this is another example of a supply chain where several countries the Hong Kong Korea Taiwan Japan Indonesia are involved in making dresses 